There's something special about discovering a hidden gem, a game that slipped under the radar, yet offers an unforgettable experience. These aren't the blockbusters everyone's talking about, but they're the ones you'll want to tell your friends about after playing. Today, I'll showcase 15 games you probably missed, but absolutely need to play. Alright, first up, we have Planet of Lana. You know those games where you're just instantly captivated by the art style? Planet of Lana totally does that right from the start. It's this hand-painted, side-scrolling adventure that feels like you're stepping into a beautifully illustrated storybook. The whole vibe is dreamy and almost cinematic, with these lush landscapes that you just want to explore forever. The real magic, though, is the bond between Lana and her little companion, Moy. Their relationship isn't just cute, it's essential to the gameplay. You're not just solving puzzles and navigating obstacles, you're doing it together, and the way the game makes you think about how to use Moy's abilities alongside Lana's gives every challenge this extra layer of depth. There's this one moment where you have to send Moy off to distract an enemy while you sneak by. It's tense and sweet all at once. The story, too, quietly pulls you in. It's mysterious and unfolds at this perfect pace, keeping you curious without overwhelming you. It kind of reminded me of Inside or Limbo, but with a lot more heart and hope. Honestly, if you're into games that mix gorgeous visuals with thoughtful, emotional storytelling, Planet of Lana is a must-play. It's like a peaceful journey that stays with you long after you've put the controller down. Next, we have Roki. If you've ever been enchanted by the world of Scandinavian folklore, Roki will feel like a cozy, snow-covered homecoming. This game is an absolute gem. Its art style is soft and whimsical, but don't let that fool you. Beneath the surface is a tale that's rich with emotion and adventure. You play as Tove, a young girl on a mission to save her brother Lars from a mythical creature. What's really cool about Roki is how it balances exploration with puzzle solving in a way that feels so natural. The puzzles are clever without being frustrating, and they're deeply tied to the story. It's like every time you solve one, you're unlocking another piece of this mysterious, magical world. One of the standout things for me was the game's atmosphere. The snowy wilderness, the eerie quiet, the ancient ruins. Well, it seems that it all just pulls you in. And the creatures you encounter are straight out of folklore, but with a unique twist that makes them feel fresh. There's a moment where you come face to face with this massive ancient tree spirit. It's a scene that's both beautiful and a little bit haunting. This game is a journey through a world that feels both familiar and strange. If you're into folklore, puzzles, or just games that tell a really good story, you definitely need to play Roki. Next up, we have The Almost Gone. The Almost Gone is one of those games that sneaks up on you with its emotional weight. It's a narrative-driven puzzle game, but it's really more like a deep dive into the human psyche. The game is minimalistic, with these beautifully crafted dioramas that you rotate and explore, each one revealing more about the story. You're piecing together the life of the protagonist as you go. The game's themes are heavy, dealing with loss, trauma, and the complexities of family relationships. It's like every scene you explore is a snapshot of a life unraveling, and as you dig deeper, you start to see how everything connects. The storytelling is subtle, but that's what makes it so powerful. It doesn't hit you over the head with its message. Instead, it lets you figure things out at your own pace. What really struck me about The Almost Gone is how it uses its visual style to convey emotion. The pastel colors and clean lines give this almost dreamlike quality to everything, which contrasts with the darker themes in a way that really makes you think. This is quite a simple game, yet its puzzles convey the message about death, loss, and mental health. Next, let's go with Call of the Sea. Imagine a tropical island that's hiding more secrets than you could ever imagine. That's where Call of the Sea takes you. This game is a first-person puzzle adventure that's dripping with 1930s Pulp Fiction vibes. You play as Nora, a woman searching for her missing husband on a mysterious island, and from the moment you step onto its shores, you know something's not quite right. The puzzles are the heart of this game, and they're fantastic. Challenging, but never frustrating. Each one feels like it's woven into the fabric of the story, revealing more about the island's strange history and the fate of Nora's husband. There's a real sense of discovery here, 
like you're uncovering an ancient civilization's secrets with each new area you explore. What really sets Call of the Sea apart is its narrative. The game starts off feeling like a classic adventure story, but as you dig deeper, things take a turn for the surreal. There's this underlying tension, a sense that you're unraveling something far bigger than just a lost expedition. And then there's the ending. It's the kind of twist that leaves you rethinking everything you've just played through. The island itself is a character too. The vibrant, almost alien landscapes are stunning, and the way the game plays with color and light is just gorgeous. It's like stepping into a painting that's slowly coming to life. If you're a fan of narrative-driven games with a touch of the mysterious and the fantastical, Call of the Sea is also definitely worth your time. Next up is Inked a Tale of Love. This game feels like flipping through the pages of a sketchbook where every drawing comes to life. The entire game is hand-drawn in this gorgeous ballpoint pen style, which is honestly one of the most unique art directions I've seen in a game. It's like playing inside an artist's notebook, with every scene filled with intricate details and creative charm. You play as the nameless hero on a quest to rescue your love, Aiko. The story might sound simple, but it's the way it's told that makes it so compelling. The narrative unfolds not just through the game's dialogue, but also through the environment and puzzles. Each puzzle feels like a new challenge that's been sketched out just for you to solve, and they're as clever as they are beautiful. There's this one puzzle involving bridges that really blew my mind. It made me stop and just appreciate how thoughtfully designed the game is. Now, this game was also commendable on how it intertwines art and emotion. The story is deep, and it's quite unique compared to some known games out there. The game doesn't just tell you a story, it makes you feel it with every stroke of the pen. If you're into games that are as much about the experience as they are about the gameplay, you should try playing Inked a Tale of Love. It's a journey that's as touching as it is visually appealing. Up next, we have Little Misfortune. Little Misfortune is a game that's as dark as it is adorable, which is a combination you don't come across too often. You step into the shoes of Misfortune Ramirez Hernandez, an eight-year-old girl with the most innocent, endearing outlook on life, despite everything around her being incredibly twisted. The game's narrative is driven by choices, with Misfortune being guided by a mysterious voice one that, let's just say, doesn't have her best interests at heart. What's really fascinating about Little Misfortune is how it balances its cute, hand-drawn art style with themes that are anything but light. The world she navigates is filled with bizarre, unsettling moments, yet the way Misfortune interprets everything with her childlike innocence adds this bittersweet charm to the experience. There's this one scene where she's walking through a park, and the contrast between her cheerful commentary and the eerie, almost sinister atmosphere around her is just haunting. It's like the game constantly plays with your expectations, making you smile one moment and feel deeply unsettled the next. The humor in Little Misfortune is also worth mentioning. It's dark and dry, almost like a twisted fairy tale, which fits perfectly with the overall tone of the game. I know this game is obviously not everyone's cup of tea, but if you like this kind of approach, then Little Misfortune is a must play. There's also a demo of the game on Steam that you can try before getting the full game. Next on the list is Forgotten Anne. Forgotten Anne is like stepping into a beautifully animated film that you get to control. The art style is reminiscent of Studio Ghibli, with every frame looking like it's been carefully hand-drawn. You play as Anne, an enforcer in a world where forgotten objects like old toys and mismatched socks come to life, each with their own personalities and stories. The world building in this game is just incredible. The forgotten lands are full of charm and melancholy, a place where every object has its own history, and it's Anne's job to keep order in this world, which brings up some interesting moral dilemmas. The choices you make throughout the game have a real impact, leading to multiple endings, which adds a lot of replay value. What really stands out, though, is the storytelling. Forgotten Anne doesn't just rely on its gorgeous visuals, it weaves a narrative that's rich and emotional. There's a scene where Anne confronts one of the rebels, and the dialogue is so well written that you can't help but feel for both characters. The voice acting is top-notch, bringing these animated characters to life in a way that makes the whole experience feel like a living, breathing world. 
If you're into narrative-driven games that offer a bit of introspection along with stunning visuals, Forgotten Anne is a game that's easy to lose yourself in. It's a beautiful, heartfelt journey that resonates long after the credits roll. Moving forward, we have The Suicide of Rachel Foster, a game that's all about atmosphere and storytelling. You play as Nicole, who returns to her family's old, abandoned hotel to settle her late parents' estate. The hotel is isolated, set in the middle of a snowy Montana winter, and it's as much a character in the story as Nicole herself. What's really interesting about this game is how it slowly reveals its secrets. The narrative is heavy, dealing with themes of guilt, loss, and family trauma. And the game doesn't shy away from making you feel the weight of those themes. Exploring the hotel, you uncover pieces of a dark past, and each new discovery adds another layer to the story. The game's atmosphere is incredibly immersive, with the sound design playing a huge role in building tension. The creaking floorboards, the howling wind outside, it all adds to the sense of unease that permeates the hotel. And then there's the story itself, which is told through a series of phone calls with a man named Irving. The relationship that develops between Nicole and Irving is central to the narrative, and it's one of the most intriguing aspects of the game. If you're into psychological thrillers with a strong focus on narrative, The Suicide of Rachel Foster is one you should definitely play. It's a haunting, emotional journey that keeps you hooked until the very end. Next up is Mosaic. This is one of those games that feels like a mirror held up to modern life, and it's not always a pretty reflection. The game is a surreal exploration of the monotony and isolation that often comes with urban living. You play as a nameless office worker going through the motions of a dreary, repetitive life, and it's in these moments of monotony that the game really hits home. What's unique about Mosaic is how it uses its visual and audio design to convey a sense of overwhelming bleakness. The world around you is gray, lifeless, and the music is this constant droning hum that just reinforces the feeling of being trapped. But then, every so often, the game throws you into these surreal, almost dreamlike sequences that break up the monotony and offer a glimpse of something more, something meaningful. It's in these moments that the game really shines, offering brief escapes from the drudgery and making you think about the bigger picture. Compared to all of the games on this list, Mosaic seems a real reflection of our everyday life. If you're curious what will happen to our nameless protagonist, give Mosaic a try. Up next is Twin Mirror. Twin Mirror takes you on a psychological journey that feels like a blend of a noir thriller and a deep dive into the complexities of the human mind. You play as Sam Higgs, a former investigative journalist who returns to his hometown for a friend's funeral, only to find himself embroiled in a mystery that's more personal than he ever imagined. What's really cool about Twin Mirror is how it uses Sam's mind as a key gameplay element. He has this ability called the Mind Palace, where he can recreate scenes and explore different possibilities. It's a bit like being inside Sherlock Holmes' head, piecing together clues and making connections that others might miss. The Mind Palace sequences are visually striking and offer a unique way to approach problem solving, making you feel like you're really digging into the core of the mystery. The game also dives deep into Sam's inner struggles. He's dealing with his own demons, and you can feel the tension between trying to solve the mystery and dealing with his personal issues. The choices you make along the way shape not only the story, but also how Sam interacts with the people around him. There's a moment where you have to decide whether to confront someone from Sam's past or let it slide. It's these decisions that add weight to the narrative and make you really think about the consequences. This narrative drive, with a psychological twist, makes Twin Mirror a must-play. If you're into this kind of game, you should also give this game a shot. Next on the list is Blacktail. Ever wondered how it would feel to step into the shoes of a character straight out of Slavic folklore? Blacktail pulls you right into that world, and it's not just another fantasy setting. You're Yaga, a young girl accused of witchcraft, and the story unfolds in this eerie, enchanted forest where your choices shape the journey. What really grabbed me here was how the game makes you question everything. The narrative isn't just about good versus evil, 
It's about the gray areas in between, and how Yaga's path can lead her toward becoming the feared Baba Yaga, or something else entirely. The archery mechanics are tight and satisfying. Every shot feels precise, and as you upgrade your abilities, the combat becomes this beautiful dance of timing and strategy. The visuals are lush, almost otherworldly, with the forest alive with magic and danger. The game's atmosphere is so thick with tension and mystery, it's hard to pull yourself away. Now, the settings may push some other players off of this game, but if you give it a shot, it's definitely worth it. Currently, Blacktail is available on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. The Chant takes the classic survival horror formula and twists it into something fresh and unnerving. Set on a remote island during a spiritual retreat, this game doesn't waste any time before plunging you into its strange, cultish vibe. You play as Jess, who's just looking for some peace and healing, but what she gets is far from it. What's different here is how the game blends psychological horror with cosmic elements, creating this creeping dread that's more about what you don't see than what you do. Exploration is key, and the island is full of dark secrets that reveal themselves piece by piece. The combat feels raw and desperate, which fits perfectly with the atmosphere. You're not a warrior, you're just trying to survive. And then there's the spiritual side, where rituals and relics play a crucial role in both the story and the gameplay. I still remember the first time I had to perform a ritual to keep the madness at bay. It was tense, disorienting, and incredibly effective at pulling me deeper into the game's world. Now, this is a relatively short game, which will take you around maybe seven to nine hours to complete. But I've got to tell you that you're not wasting your time if you play this game. If you're into horror that messes with your mind as much as it scares you, the chant is a must play. It's an experience that leaves a lasting impression long after the credits roll. Up next, we have Lost Ember. You play as a wolf with the ability to inhabit other animals, and that's where the game truly shines. The freedom to soar through the skies as a bird or dive into the depths of a river as a fish adds a layer of immersion that's rare to find. It's not just a gimmick though. Each animal's perspective reveals new paths and secrets, making the world feel rich and alive. The game's narrative unfolds gradually, with pieces of the past coming together as you explore. The connection between the wolf and the spirit that guides you is both touching and profound, telling a story of redemption and lost memories. What sticks with me is the simplicity of it all. No combat, no complex mechanics, just pure exploration and storytelling. Visually, Lost Ember is really commendable. The landscapes are varied and vibrant, from lush forests to vast deserts, each area offering something new to marvel at. There's a moment when you first take flight as a bird, and the sheer freedom of it is exhilarating. The game's soundtrack complements this beautifully, with soothing, melodic tunes that match the pace of your journey. Lost Ember is less about challenges and more about the experience. It's a game to get lost in, to wander and wonder, and it's one that leaves you with a sense of peace and reflection. Next up is Someday You'll Return. This game really knows how to get under your skin. Someday You'll Return is a psychological horror adventure that feels deeply personal. You're Daniel, a father searching for his missing daughter in the forests of Moravia, and the deeper you go, the more you realize this journey is about much more than just finding her. The game dives into themes of guilt, parenthood, and the things we try to bury deep down. The atmosphere here is oppressive in the best way possible. The forest is vast, but it's no peaceful retreat. Every path feels like it's hiding something. Every sound could be leading you to or away from danger. There's this one part where you find an old abandoned camp, and as you piece together the events that happen there, the dread just builds and builds. The game's use of Czech folklore adds a unique twist, making the horrors feel both ancient and familiar. Someday You'll Return also stands out with its survival elements. Crafting, tracking, and navigating the environment are essential to progressing. The puzzles are challenging, often requiring you to pay close attention to your surroundings and the lore you uncover. 
the blend of horror and emotional narrative is the main reason why I recommend this one. It's not just about scares, it's about the journey into Daniel's psyche, which is as haunting as the forest itself. Finally, let's wrap things up with The Medium. The Medium is a game that's built on dualities. Two worlds, two realities, and a story that straddles the line between them. You play as Marianne, a medium who can navigate both the physical world and the spirit realm, often at the same time. This dual reality gameplay is something I hadn't seen before. And it's not just a gimmick, it's integral to how you solve puzzles and progress through the game. The story is steeped in psychological horror, with layers of mystery that unfold as you delve deeper into both realities. The game perfectly tackles themes of trauma and loss using the spirit world as a metaphor for the things we can't leave behind. Visually, the medium is stunning, especially in how it contrasts the decaying oppressive spirit world with the more grounded reality. The transitions between these worlds are seamless, often happening in real time, which adds to the tension and keeps you on edge. Plus the soundtrack, composed by Akira Yamaoka of Silent Hill fame, only adds to the atmosphere, making every moment feel heavy with significance. The Medium isn't just a horror game, it's a deep, atmospheric experience that stays with you, long after you've finished. It's the kind of game that makes you think about the stories we carry with us, in both the worlds we can see and those we can't. If you enjoyed this list and found a new game to add to your collection, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.